Hey, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Nick and I teach Python and data science tutorials here and at my website at datag.io. Welcome back to video two of this Pandas introductory series where you'll learn all about how to use Pandas to create meaningful insights into your data set as well as some data visualizations straight from Pandas. In this video, we'll cover off what the data frame index is and how to select data within your data frame. If you haven't watched the first video and need to learn a little bit about how to install pandas as well as what the data frame structure is, be sure to watch that video which I'll link to right up here. Okay, let's start writing some code. In the previous lesson we covered off how to install and import pandas as well as how to load the data frame that we'll be using for the rest of this series. So I won't go into too too much detail here but just as a quick recap, in this cell we're importing pandas as pd. This cell here uses the pandas read CSV function to read in a URL and assign it to our data frame df. And you can find the URL in the description box below. And with this, we're just going to print out the first five rows of the data frame. So what we can see here is that we have different columns, the first one being rank and then major code, major and so on. And so part of what we want to cover off today is the index that's used within pandas. The index is the basic object that stores labels for pandas objects and lets you filter in the data by slicing and ordering data in different ways. By default, a data frame will have this column here without any identifier starting at zero and continuing down for the length minus one of your data set. And so this doesn't necessarily have to be the index that you choose to work with, but by default an index is what you see here. In case you wanted to set your own index, we could do this using the setIndex function available within pandas. So say you wanted to set your index to be some of one of these columns here. You should try to make it something that's unique, although it doesn't have to be unique, but definitely something that's relevant within the data. So for example, if we wanted to set it to be the major code column, we could do this by writing df for our data frame, set underscore index, and then in quotes, the column name. So when we print this out, we can see now that the index column now has a name called major code, and major code has actually disappeared from where it was before. And so really what this has done is it's set the index and it's replaced our previous index with this major code field here. I should point out that this is, hasn't actually been applied to the data frame. So now if we reprinted the data frame, you could see that the index is actually here still. In order to make this change carry through, there are two different ways in which you could do that. The first is by reassigning the data frame. So you could write df equals df dot set index and then major code and then if we run this now and then print out the data frame head again you can see that it's actually been directly applied the other way is by using the in place argument so i'm just going to refresh this by loading in our data frame as it was before if you wanted to do it without reassigning the object you could simply write df dot set index major code and then a comma in place equals true and so this just says that apply this transfer transformation in place so now when we run this and print out the head you can see that it's been applied without having to reassign the object so if you wanted to only select one column of this data frame you can do this by simply writing df dot and say so you wanted to only select the major column notice that i've capitalized major just as it is uh, as it is in the column header here now when we run this you can see that we get our index that we still have set here as well as all of the corresponding majors for that the other way of selecting a column is by using dictionary notation so you can write df major and this returns the exact same thing. Both of these are equally valid approaches, but this approach here is one of the more commonly used ones as it doesn't have some of the limitations that this approach would have. 
For example, if your column had spaces in between it, you wouldn't be able to use this approach at all, and you would have to use this one here. Similarly, Python has a number of reserved keywords, such as index, length, and those types of things. So these wouldn't work here, but they would work in this approach. There are two really helpful ways of accessing data within your data frame. They're the iloc and the loc functions. The iloc function takes an integer position in order to return that piece of data that you're looking for, whereas the loc parameter uses a named entity. Both of them work in a similar way. So for example, if you wanted to select every item belonging to the very first major that you have listed here, which is major code 2419, or the very first position, you could use the iloc and loc function in different ways. So the loc function uses the actual label that's associated with that index. So for example, if we were to use the loc function, you would write df.loc, and then you would write the label into this loc accessor. So we could write 2419, and now when we print this out, you can see that we get all of the different columns returned for that. Now, say we were only interested in returning, say, that record and only the major for that. That can be done by using a comma in the search query as well. So we can write comma, and then we would simply write major. And this returns only the value at the cross section of row 2419, column major. Now, what if you don't know what index this value really has, but you only know that you want to return the very first row for that? You can do that easily using the iloc accessor. So you could write df iloc, and since Python is zero indexed, you would write zero. Now when we run this, you can see that it returns the exact same object that we had before, but using a very different method of doing so. Similarly, if we wanted to access only the first row and the major column, we would need to figure out positionally where the major column is. So if we scroll back up here, we can see that major is the second, so index one. So in that case, we could write df.iloc 0, 1, and it would return what we did here with the loc indicator by using 2419 and major. Similarly, you're able to access different slices of your data set. And this is, you can think of this as perhaps the same way that we would use the head or the tail function. So say you were interested in returning the very first five columns. You could do that by using iloc, and then we could type 0 through 5 and then return this. And this returns the first five rows. Now note that it doesn't actually include the fifth index item. So the way that this indexing works is it starts here and ends here, but doesn't include this last number. I should note that this zero here is actually optional. We could do the we could accomplish the exact same thing by omitting the zero because it's implied. So anything up to the fifth index would be returned and this returns the exact same thing. Similarly, if you wanted to for example mimic the tail function, you could do this by using df iloc and in this case we're going to use a negative index, so negative 5 to the remainder of the data set. Now when we print this out, we get the last five records of the data set. The way that both iloc and loc work is that it goes rows first and then columns after that. So similarly, if you wanted to only return the first five rows and the first three columns, you could write df iloc colon 5 comma colon 3. And this returns the first five records and only the first three columns. Now say you were interested in selecting a particular condition meeting a requirement. So say you only wanted to return any record where the major was equal to ecology. You could do this by writing df major 
and then a double equal sign here. And we're using a double equal sign because we want to equate whether or not the major is equal to a string rather than assigning it. Ecology. So what gets returned here is a Boolean series that identifies whether or not each record matches ecology or not. In this case, 2419 doesn't match ecology because it's petroleum engineering and so on. So the way that we could do this to actually filter the row is by using df, then an opening square bracket, another df, and then major, and then in between the two square brackets, simply write ecology. Now when we return this, it returns the entire data frame filtered down to this particular condition being true. This is actually the exact same thing as if we had written df loc, and then df major equals ecology. But it's a much more elegant way of writing all of this out using this method here. This works for any condition, not just total equality. So for example, if we were interested in returning any record where the share of women was greater than 50%, we could do this by writing df, df, share women, and then here, write greater than 0.5. Now when we print this out, we can see that it's returned only where that condition is actually true. You're also able to combine different conditions by using the AND operator or the pipe operator for OR. So for example, if you wanted to return any categories here where the share of women was more than 50% and the major category was biology and life sciences, then you would be able to do this by writing DF and then Within this, an opening regular bracket, df, share women, greater than 0.5, then after the regular bracket, an ampersand, and another opening bracket, df, major category, is equal to biology and life sciences. And then this returns only records where both of these conditions are true. Now what if you were only interested in returning records where either of the conditions were true? In that case, you'd be able to replace the ampersand with the pipe symbol, which in Python signifies OR. So when we run this now, you get a much different data set where it may include records where the, con where the share of women is less than 50%, or outside of the physical, uh, out of the biology and life sciences major category. Now, say you were interested in returning records of belonging to either health or biology and life sciences. You could do this with an or statement where you would write df, df, where you would write df, and then in a single quote, df, major category equals health and then the pipe symbol here and then df major category equals biology and life science now when we run this it evaluates and returns any records where either of these conditions are true but say you had a whole massive list of different OR statements that you wanted to be true. So for example, if we threw in engineering into this as a category as well, writing these all out as OR statements becomes quite difficult. So say we wanted to replace this with a much easier way of writing this. We can do this by, I'm just gonna comment this piece out here. We could write DF, DF major category. And then here we'll use the isIn method. And within the method, we'll include a list where we'll write health and biology and life science. So when we run this, we get the exact same data frame returned, but it's a lot easier to write and to write. All right, you've learned quite a bit in this video. You've learned all about the data frame index as well as how to select data. As an extra challenge, how would you select data from biology or health and life sciences where the share of women is greater than 
Leave a comment below and let me know how you would do it. The next video will cover off Pandas summary functions, where you'll be able to learn all about creating meaningful summary statistics of your data set. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you want to watch more of my videos, click the subscribe button and be sure to hit the little bell icon to be notified of when I release new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.